All right, so here's our template that we're going to be using, the uh, site plan template. And uh, this is the drawing area that we're looking at. So again, we have the, um, uh, the area about the community here. It has specifically, we're looking at lot 63, and uh, it has the grades all around the lot. And also explain what this little X means here. This little X, if we look at the legend, tells us what side the garage should be on. It tells us the garage location. So the developer has said, you know what, I want the community to look a certain way. So when you come in from this street here, we don't want to see just a garage. We want to be able to see the front entry of the home. So they've placed the garage on the side opposite of the front street. And then, of course, we alternate. So then the, you want to have the garages sort of side by side or, or next to each other so that they're aligned. So the X would be on this side, and then it switches over, and it goes out. You can notice that it, the pattern continues all the way along until you get to the end. Now, they've, they've planned that all so that, uh, you know, it looks the nicest. When you come into the community, you're not just seeing big garages. You're seeing front entries because that looks more appealing than just a big garage. Um, so that when we place our uh, lot onto the particular site plan, we're going to be um, conscious of the fact that it need, the garage needs to go on that side of the property. So we've already got our house lined up so that it's like that. The garage is already on the right-hand side. If we were doing, doing the uh, lot next to it, say lot 62, we would have to flip our house. Okay? So we're going to go over to the drawing area here, the, ten, the uh, title block in the drawing area. I'm just going to move the existing one out. This is just for references for you guys. I'm just going to move it out of the way here because I want to use that space for drawing. So I'm just going to move it out there. And now we're going to, uh, to start drawing. But before we do that, we want to check our drawing setup. So one of the things that I'm going to check is I'm going to check my units here. So I'm going to go Format, Units. Now because I've supplied this to you, uh, everything should be um, the way it's supposed to be. But uh, you do want to double check this because otherwise you will have problems when you're drawing. So the first thing you want to check is in the angle here. So you want to make sure that you're on degrees, minutes, seconds for your angles because that's how we're going to be inputting our angles. We're going to be doing it in degrees, minutes, seconds. And the precision that we want is going to be zero degrees, zero minutes, and zero seconds. And we want to make sure that clockwise is ticked on as well. Now for the length, I prefer to do a precision of three decimal places for precision. So that's something that you might want to change and make sure it's on decimal. Okay, And the units to uh, scale the inserted content, well we're not going to be inserting anything but uh, let's move that to meters. And the last thing that we're going to look at is the direction. We want to check on the direction. So under direction control, this tells us where the base angle is located. We want that to be north. Okay, So the base angle is going to be north. And that'll have to, you'll have to change that because I think the AutoCAD default is east. You want to make sure that that gets selected to north. And once you have that uh, configured, you're pretty much ready to go. All the uh, layers should be set up for you. So you can just do a quick scan of the layers. Make sure that you have the layers that you see here. Um, there's a lot of layers that pertain to our site plan and they all start with C. Those are the ones that I've created. And because I brought in that building grade plan, a lot of the other building grade plan layers have come in as well. So these, these are all the layers that, um, are for the most part, all the layers that came in with that building grade plan. We're not going to use those too much. We're going to focus on staying with the uh, layers that start with C for the most part. There are a few exceptions, like Eve lines, for example. And I've also configured for you as well different dimension styles. So we have some dimension styles, standard, dims, notes, things like that. And I've also configured different, uh, or sorry, textiles and dimension styles. So different uh, dimension styles here and different textiles as well. And I'll indicate which textiles I'm, and which dimension styles I'm using before I use them, as well as the layers. I'll try and make sure I remember which layer I'm going to be drawing on as well. All right, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to draw the property lines. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to draw the property lines. Now, it doesn't really matter that I draw in that drawing area to begin with. We'll move it in there once we get it to a point where we're comfortable with uh, the overall size of it. But to start with, I'm just going to kind of draw off in model space here. Okay, so I'm going to select the layer, C Prop. And that's my property line layer. And I'm going to flip over and show you where I'm getting this information from. So if we go to the uh, go to D2L here, 
You'll notice our property for the site plan. Now I handed this out to you, so you should have a copy of it as well. Sorry, that's not the right one. It's going to be under, uh, where is it here? It's under site plan, production, and it's under the assignment. I believe it's attached to the back of the assignment. Let's just make sure that it's here. Yeah, there we are here. Okay, so this gives you the information that you need to know in terms of the uh, angles of the lines, the radius of the arcs, some information about the uh, utility right away, information about the plan itself, and we'll show you what's, what information is important. But we want to start drawing this. Basically, we want to get this outline drawn first. That's the first thing we're going to focus on. Okay, so um, now the best way to do that, if I flip back into, uh, into that, just open that back up again. Um, we've best, but first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw two big circles. Now you could spend hours literally, literally trying to figure out these radiuses and trying to get everything to work out. So I'm going to show you guys a little bit of a trick that's going to take literally a couple minutes to do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a circle. Now it doesn't matter where I create my circle point, but I'm just going to draw a circle and I'm going to make the radius of that circle 131.5. Now that tells me, or that's the uh, the outer radius of that particular plan. So let's look at this lot number 63. That's this curve right here. This curve has a radius of 131.5. That's where I'm getting that number from. Okay, the next curve that we have has a radius of 96.5. So let me go and draw that circle now. We're going to draw it with the same center point. So I'm going to reinvoke the center uh, circle command. I'm going to make sure that I choose the same center point as the previous circle, but the radius of this one is only going to be 96.5. So I should have two circles, or two, two, uh, yeah, two circles. It looks like a disc now. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line from the center point that's going to be basically 131.5 meters long, but it's going to have the angle of the first one of the first sides. So let's do this side first. It's going to have this angle, 191 degrees, 8 minutes and 21 seconds. That's going to be the uh, angle of that line. So I'm going to draw that. And Now if you look at how I'm doing this, I'm doing at. So that tells AutoCAD to draw from the point that I've selected and not a reference in you know, on the, the model space, but it's from the point that I selected, which is the start point, at 131.5. And then the angle, right, so I use a little alligator symbol, right, greater than, less than symbol, I use that. That tells me, it tells AutoCAD that we need this to be an angle. What follows is going to be an angle. And 191 degrees, so I type in 191D, 191 degrees, 8 minutes, and that was 21 seconds, right? Okay, now when I press enter, what I should get is a line in that direction. Now, if you haven't done your drawing setup properly, you'll get a line in an opposite direction than what you see there. It should be down and a little bit to the left. If you haven't done your drawing setup properly, for instance, you didn't choose your direction, you didn't choose clockwise, or you didn't choose the right, uh, you know, you'll get something other than that. So you need to do a little bit more investigation if you don't get what you see on the screen there. Now I'm going to draw another line, again from the same center point. Well, I've already got the end point of that line selected. Again, I have my O snaps turned on, and the O snaps are configured to, uh, you know, mid end point, things like that. So you'll notice I use those a lot. Okay, so again, this one's going to be the same length of line, except it's going to be a different angle. So the length is going to be at, don't forget that at, 131.5. And the angle of that line, let's just flip over to, uh, back to this one, is going to be 185 degrees. We're drawing this side of the property line now. 185 degrees, 10 minutes, and 32 seconds. 185, 10, 32. So 185 degrees, 10 minutes, 32 seconds. And now you should get, essentially, what looks like our lot. You can see how it's sort of developing here, right? So with four objects, I've created that entire lot. And I'll tell you, in industry, and I've had to do this in the past, I've had to do plot plans in the past, I didn't know about this little trick of creating two circles first. So I would draw my two lines, and then I would try and connect them with an arc, and I must have spent literally hours trying to figure out how to get those points to connect.
this is just a really easy way to do it. And I'm glad that uh, it was one of my students actually that pointed it out to me, pointed out a way of doing that. So now I'm just going to trim off all the excess. Hang on, let's try that again. And what I'm left with is my property. Okay, so there's the borders of my property. Now I'm going to move that into the drawing area so that everything's in the location where I need it. Now it really doesn't matter where you put it in the drawing area as long as it's centered. You may end up moving it later, so don't worry about that. Um, you just want to provide a little bit of room. You know that you're going to be adding more, um, you know, more information around these property lines. But for now, that's that's all we need to uh, to worry about. We can always move it later. Okay. Now, if this, for instance, if we were placing this in, and let's imagine for a second, let's make a copy of it. Let's imagine that this was uh, actually rotated a different direction. Let's imagine it, was, it looked more like this. Okay, and we went to place it in. We notice it's really, really tight. There's not a lot of room there, is there? What you might want to do then is you might want to actually rotate it, but change the north arrow direction. Right, because essentially this is north. We've we've indicated that north is straight up. We did that when we did our format units. We did the direction of north as being 270, essentially 270. That's telling the AutoCAD that this we want to be north. So anything we draw should be in relation to north. Um, if that's not the case, then what we might want to do is we might want to rotate that north arrow. So rotate it at the same time as we rotate the plan to get it to the point where we want, and that way, um, you know. The, the plan is oriented in the proper location according to the north area. Fortunately for us, we don't have to worry about that. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create the lot pocket. So we talked a little bit about the lot pocket. So we're going to create the lot pocket now. So I'm going to use the offset command. And I'm going to set my offset according to the bylaws. Okay. Alright, so the offset on the side of the property uh, was 1.22 meters. Okay, so we're going to offset from the side 1.22 meters on both sides. Now the offset in the front, the bylaw says that we can get away with 3 meters at the front, but the developer wants a different look in this community than houses that close to the front. Also, they, they want front drive garages, which means we need to have room to park a car on the driveway in front of the garage. And so instead of using a 3 meter offset, we're going to use a 6 meter offset at the front from the property line. So there's my 6 meters. We'll leave that three meter in there because we'll eventually turn that into the um, utility right away. There's a utility right away that's three meters off the front. So we'll just leave that in for now. But essentially, our lot pocket is going to be at the six meter mark at the front. And for the rear, we have seven and a half meters. Nothing can be closer than seven and a half meters. So this essentially, what we have here is the lot pocket. Our house can fit in this little pocket in here. Any configuration that we want as long as the garage is on the right hand side according to the developer. So I'm just going to now trim off all the excess. You guys are familiar with the double trim command, right? Alright, we'll clean this up a little bit later. But now this is my lot pocket. So I'm going to change the layer of that because it's the property layer. I want to change that to the lot pocket layer. So we actually have a layer here that I've designated for the lot pocket. There it is there. And that just uh, creates a nice light colored line. Again, this is an imaginary lot pocket. It's not real. This is just for our purposes. Um, therefore, we don't need to, uh, you know, we don't need to highlight it like we in, in terms of importance, like we do the property line. Okay, it's just mostly for our purposes. All right. So the next thing we can do while we're here, before we get into doing the house or working with the house, is we can add some dimensions to this property line. So I'm going to go to the Annotate tab up here, and I'm going to check um, an aligned dimension. I'm going to use an aligned dimension. I'm going to make sure that I'm using the Prop Dims style, okay? Property Dimensions, and I'm going to use the Aligned. And I'm just going to click on one corner here and the other corner here, and now you'll see that I have this property or this dimension style configured that I can manually locate the dimensions. So that's what I want to do. I want to locate it on the outside of the property line, so somewhere around there. But we need to include the angle information in that line as well. It just kind of makes sense to include the angle information here. Now one of the ways that you can do that is you can create a text item and you can rotate your text and try and fit it in next to it. The problem with that is, is it takes too long. And also you may not get the angle just right so it might look funny. 
to the untrained eye, you might not be able to see it, but somebody who's been looking at plot plans for a while is going to notice that and it's going to annoy them. So one of the things that I want to show you how to do is do a text override. Now you guys might be familiar with this already, but if I go into my properties for this text item, and I go down to text override here, I don't want to override the dimension. So that means if I ever make a change to that, that dimension, I want it always to be an accurate dimension. But I don't want to actually, I want to add some text to it. So the best way to do that, there's a command in AutoCAD that allows us to do that. If we do the little greater than or less than symbols right next to each other, what that tells AutoCAD is take the, the real dimension, but then add some text to it or modify it in a certain way. So I put it in a couple spaces because I want a little bit of space between my dimension and the, uh, the text that I'm going to add now. And now I want to add the angle of that line. So if I remember correctly, it was 191 degrees, 8 minutes, 21 seconds. Is that right? Okay, so then I add that in and press enter. You can see now that it's kept that 35 meters. And if that dimension were to change, that 35 would update, but it would always keep this angle. And it's already perfectly aligned. Okay, now the other thing is I forgot to uh, select my uh, layer for this, so I actually want this to be the C Anno Dims. So that's my dimensions layer. So it's going to change it to a cyan color. And I'll make that the, uh, the current layer so that I can do the rest of my dimensions. So same thing on the other side. Do this dimension here, this the straight line. Okay, I'm going to manually place the dimensions just a little out of the uh, on the outside. And then I'm going to do my text override again. So I go down to uh, properties. I just have my properties palette. I have it fixed to the left. You can do that as well. If you uh, go down, you right click on the bar for the properties palette and go anchor left and turn auto hide on, then it'll always be there. So I have my layers and I have my properties. That's just the way I like to work. So you, you have your own preferences, that's fine. But it just makes it really easy. So I don't have to right click all the time when I want to invoke the properties editor. And now this one was uh, 185 degrees, 10 minutes, help me out here, 21, 22, 32, thank you, 32 seconds. Okay, I put a couple spaces there as well because I want a little bit of distance between, I don't want that to run right in. Alright, so now that, that, that uh, those dimensions are done. Now the next one is we want to do these arcs on the outside here. So I'm going to choose the arc length dimension option. And then I'm going to select my arc. Okay, and it automatically comes up with a uh, dimension there. It's really handy. And we do the same thing at the bottom. And it automatically aligns it to that arc as well, which is again really handy. You could spend a long time trying to figure out what that angle is. Whereas if you do the arc length option, it just automatically does it, and it automatically includes a symbol, which means arc length dimension as well. And again, we're just going to do our text overrides here. Now, the override that we're going to put in here is actually going to be the um, radius. So I'm going to put in R for radius, 131.5. Okay, so R means that's the radius of that particular arc, 131.5. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to do an override here as well. Space, space. This is 96.5. Oh, I forgot my R. R96.5. There we go. There we have the dimensions and the angles of the outside of the property line. Now, this is a fairly simple property line. Some of them get quite complicated. Some of them have angles, curves, fillets, things like that. Uh, we're using a fairly simple example. Just keep that in mind. It, you know. Um, arc length really comes in handy, as well as the text override. So those are sort of the key that you want to uh, take away from, from that process anyways. Okay, so now we can move over to our house block. So I've included a house block for you in this plan. There's a copy of it here. I'm just going to bring it over nearby. I'm not going to put it inside yet because we need to actually do some work on the house plan before we put it inside of the property. All right, but essentially what's going to happen is we're going to be moving this. We're going to creating a, be creating a block out of it and then moving it into this lot pocket here and orienting it and configuring it to fit the lot in the best location possible. So we're going to focus in a little bit on how to modify this one. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to be adding a driveway and a sidewalk to the front of this here. So I'm going to choose my layer C road.
C road. And now I'm going to just draw a line. Now this represents the line of the, um, the driveway. Now here's another reason why you don't want to import this into this drawing right away is because you want to deal with lines that are straight up and down. I've had students in the past who have brought this in and then tried to draw lines that are parallel to existing lines on an angle. It just gets really messy. It gets really hard to do. If we draw outside of this property here, create it as a block, we can then take this and insert it in. And if we need to, we can modify by editing the block in place. And then make it really easy to make quick changes to it if we need to. Okay? So I'm going to draw another set of lines for the driveway. Again, these it doesn't matter the length of these lines. We're going to change them once we get them onto the property anyways. So I'm just kind of drawing something to begin with here. Um, I'm going to draw a line from here. Now the, the uh, width of this step you can see is 1.829. I'm going to draw a line that's about that length, 1.829. And then I'm going to draw it back to the, the house here. This is going to be sort of, we're going to curve this, we're going to put a little fillet on it, and we're going to um, bring it into the sidewalk as well. So now I'm going to draw another line that's going to be from this point here, but I actually want to draw it a little bit off. I want to do it uh, three three feet, three and a half feet, so 42 inches. So I'm going to get my calculator out here to do the conversion because I don't know what that conversion is. Let me just look it up real quick here. So 3.5 times oops, divided by 3.28, 1.06. So I'm going to go um, at negative 1.06 comma zero. Okay, so that's going to draw a line now that comes out about three and a half feet from the garage. I'm just going to draw that straight up here. I'm going to draw another line out here. And this is going to be 1.07 up here and across here. You'll see how this is all going to uh, look like a nice little sidewalk when we're finished with it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my fillet command. My fillet command, there we are, fillet command. I'm going to choose a radius. The radius is going to be um, Let's make it the width of the sidewalk. See what that looks like. And I'm going to fill it this corner here. That's maybe a bit too much. Okay, so let me make it a bit smaller. So fill it. Let's do radius from here to here and see if that looks a little bit better. Yeah, that's a bit better. And then I'm going to do the same thing here so we get a nice transition. I'm going to keep that same fillet, fill it here. And I won't fill it the part that comes up to the uh, driveway. We'll just move this back a little bit. It should be a, it's more of a kind of a hard line anyways. We'll just modify this accordingly. And we can delete that. So you can see now we have our nice little sidewalk. The width of this right here is about three and a half feet, 3.5 feet, which ends up being about 1.07 meters. All right, so next we want to add in some window wells. Now the window wells are actually on a, uh, a hide layer, a hidden line layer. So we're going to go to uh, layer C-hide. Okay, that's a hidden line. And the dimension of these window wells is 0.457 by 1.52. That's about 5 feet. 0.457 as well. That's how deep they are. Okay, so that's just I'm giving those that those that information to you. There's a window well. I might actually create that as a block. So I'm going to go to insert. I'm going to go create block. I'm going to call this window. Pull this open so you guys can see it. Window well. The base point. I'm going to make the base point about the center of the window well. So I'm going to make the make it the connection of these two points right here. Okay, that's going to be my base point. I'm going to make it so it converts to a block and it allows exploding. Okay, so now I should have this, there we go, should have the window well like that. Now we need to know where the window wells are located. There's two windows in this basement. How do I know that? Because I've looked at the plans and I've determined from the plans that we've got two window wells that need to be accommodated here. So let me uh, show you on D2L where that is where you can find the plans so you can find out the location of them. So under full working drawings, under the reference files, full working drawings is where you're going to find the plans. We're going to go to the foundation plan. Just scroll down to sheet 5. And here's a window here. Let me zoom in a little bit so we can see that a bit better. 
Okay, here's a window in this location here and a window in this location here. The dimensions that we have here, I'm trying to read those, it's a little hard to read. Uh, we got 12 foot 4 to this one here, and we've got about uh, 21 feet from the back to this to the center of this window here. Okay, so remember 12 foot 4 and 21. So again, we'll do our conversion to uh, to meters here. So I'm going to take uh, 12. Say 12.3, which is about 12 foot 4, 12 and 4 twelfths. And we're going to divide that by 3.28. And I get 3.75. So along this side here, I should have a window well that's 3.75 meters from the back. So I might as well draw a little bit of a, a line here just so I know where that is. I'll draw a line along here and I'll go 3.75. And I'll just draw it out. This is just a temporary line. I'm going to have to actually flip this. Oops, didn't delete the old copy, okay. And I'm going to move it into place, okay, so the window well is going to go about there, and I'll delete my construction lines now. There we are, so that's where it should be. Now, it doesn't have to be located exactly, okay, if you're off just a little bit, it's not a big deal as long as, in, as, 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 long as it's in the general vicinity, okay. They're going to be referring to the plans for the actual location anyways, but this is just for the site plan so that the uh, city knows where you have window wells. All right, so the other window well was 21 meters from the back of the house. So if I grab my calculator here and go 21 divided by 3.28, I get 6.4, or sorry, 21 feet. My mistake, 21 feet. That ends up being 6.4 meters. So again, I'll draw a line here, and I'll draw it approximately 6.4 meters. And I'll come out so I can see where that line is. And I'm going to then insert a copy of my window well. Automatically comes up with the last one. And I'm going to insert a copy right there. Delete my my lines. Now the last one that you'll need to do is you'll need to do the, do the cantilever. There's a cantilever on this plan. So if we go into the um, the foundation plan, you'll see in this corner right here we have a cantilever above. Now it says cantilever above, which means you've got to look above to see what the cantilever is coming from. So we have to find the main floor plan. If we scroll down to the main floor plan you'll see that the cantilever is coming from a fireplace. So there's actually a fireplace that sticks out of the room and is causing a cantilever. And there's the dimensions of it. It's five feet by one foot six. Okay? So whenever you see cantilever above, you have to look above to find out what's causing that because it's not necessarily going to show you on these plans here. All right, so we have cantilever five feet by one foot six which I believe is approximately the same size as what we have here. Now we need to know the location of it, so let's go back to our plans to find out the location of it. Uh, the cantilever starts at 5 foot 7 from the rear of the home, and is another 5 feet in, so if we add, uh, say, 2 foot 6 plus 5 foot 7, we're going to get uh, 6 foot 1. 6 foot 1. So now we're going to add a, uh, another one of these symbols at 6 foot 1 from the back of the house. So I'm going to draw a line, now not 6 foot 1, I have to convert that into metric. So we're going to take six. I'm just going to take approximately six. Again, it doesn't really matter specifically exactly where it is. We're not going to dimension to it. So six divided by 3.28 gives me 1.83. So I'm going to go 1.83, and I'm going to make a copy. Down to that point there. That's going to be the cantilever, not a window well, but a cantilever. Fortunately for us, the window well and the cantilever has approximately the same size. All right, the next thing we're, do is we're going to do is we're going to add datums into all of the corners. All right, so I've already got a symbol created that is a datum symbol. I just have to find it here. Now, I actually call it something different. I call it geodetic symbol here. Okay, so keep that in mind. That actually is a datum symbol. Uh, I've got the wrong terminology in there, but uh, it's a geodetic symbol or a, ge a datum symbol. And the insertion point we want to be able to specify on screen and have a uniform scale. So now you can see that my cursor has the block attached to it, and it's got the insertion point of where I want to insert it already configured. So now I just need to go to all four corners of the house. There's one. We can insert another one. We don't need to do uh, this one here. We just need to go to the four outside corners. And we also need to do the point where the uh, garage meets the house. So I'm actually going to make this a little bit faster and do a copy command here. 
and that'll make it a little bit quicker for me because then I can insert multiple at once. Corner of the garage as well. Alright, so we should have a total of six datums. We have the front corners of the garage. We have where the garage meets the house because that should represent the highest point and then everything slopes away from the, the uh, house at that point. So in this case, um, you know, we, may we should have slope going this way towards the back of the house and this way towards the front. And then we have the back corners of the garage as well. Or sorry, back corners of the house, not the garage, back corners of the house. Now we're going to add in the text. We're going to add in the text that goes into the center here. Um, one thing here, I've inserted these on the wrong layer. These are actually on the hidden layer. They shouldn't be on hidden layer. They should be on the C anno symbol layer. So let me go and fix that real quick. So C anno symbol layer. The color won't change because the uh, the symbol was created using that C anno symbol layer. But we just need to make sure everything is consistent that we've got it drawn on the right layer. So we're going to add the text now that needs to go on to that particular plan. So again, if you look at the uh, if you look at the um, plot plan that we've been we're working on last class, you'll notice the information that needs to go on there. So we need to put the word garage here. We need to put the word dwelling here and also some information area coverage, lowest top of footing, actual top of footing. That's the information that needs to go on there. So I'm going to select the proper layer that's going to be my C anno text layer. C stands for, by the way, I didn't explain this, but C stands for civil. Anno means it's an annotation, and it's specifically a type of, it's a text type of annotation. So annotations could be symbols or text. This is the text version of that. And now I'm going to go to uh, annotate. I'm going to make sure that I have the standard text layer selected, or standard text style. And now I'm just going to do M text is fine. You can do M text if you want. And I'm going to make sure caps lock is on and type in garage. Now the other thing I like to do is I like to center that as well. Now that's just me. I like to do that. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing down here. Dwelling. Make sure it's centered. And uh, this one is going to be a group of them. So I'm going to do area. Now the area here is 130.86 square meters or SM. Let's center that. Obviously, you need to make it a bit bigger. Do that in a bit. Okay, coverage. It's 42%. Lowest top of footing. It's 29.20. Actual top of footing. It's 29.93. All right, so now I'm just going to make this just a little bit wider so we don't have uh, moving on to several lines. And I'm also going to uh, get back in here and actually, no, we'll left, left align this one because that's the way it is on the plan. Okay, so we should have a fair bit of room there. I just want to center it just a bit more there. And I'm going to make a copy of this. Save me a little bit of time. Subfloor. 32.37. Alright, so that's some of the text that needs to go on there. We'll have some more text, but we'll add that in later. And most of the text that we need to add in at this point is going to be text that's external to the plan, so things like arrows. But we really need to have it located where we want it located before we do that because we don't want those arrows, we don't want the, the text rotating. We want to try and keep all the text horizontal if possible. So I'm going to be adding it in after I've inserted the plan into where it needs to go. Now the one thing I noticed on your um, the plan that I sent you guys is it doesn't have some of the internal dimensions here. So you want to go through and check those. And where you're going to get that information from is the working drawings. So when you go back to the working drawings, you can go to the, the foundation plan. And if you do your uh, conversion between metric and imperial, you can convert, in this example, 32 feet into the imperial dimension that would go along that one side. Now that side corresponds to this side of the house. And that should be 9.756. Again, three decimal places of accuracy is best there. And I've just done, this is actually a dimension. 
So I've got a dimension here that's house dims that is from one corner to the other and then locating specifically the, uh, the dimension there. So it's already configured for you. So you won't have to do too much in terms of uh, configuring the dimensions that are already done for you. Just make sure that all the, the dimensions are in place and that none of them are missing or got accidentally deleted. Now once that is completed, let me just make sure we have everything here, we're going to save this as a block. So I'm going to highlight the entire thing. I'm going to go create block. And I'm just going to call this house. Now my base point, this is important, we want to pick a base point that's going to allow us the most amount of flexibility for moving and rotating within this plan. Now we know that the garage needs to be on the right hand side of that plot plan. And we also know that it's probably going to be aligned to this property line. If you look at the, uh, the way that our sample plot plan is um, laid out, it's aligned to this side of the property line. So I'm probably going to pick the best base point is going to be right at this top corner right here. That's what I'm going to select for the base point of that block. And I want to be able to convert that to a block. Make sure that the allow exploding is turned on just in case you, uh, you need to do, do that. Um, I always make the mistake of accidentally unchecking that and end up paying for it later because it's, it's frustrating to fix it later. And I'm going to press OK. And I already have a block called house here, so I'm going to redefine that block. And now you should notice that when I click on it, it, it is now a block. So I'm going to insert a copy of that block. I'm going to leave it where it is. I'm just going to insert a copy of it in this plan right here. Now I'm going to go to this front corner of the lot pocket. That represents the closest point that I can get to the front. Right? I can't go any closer than that or it would violate the, uh, the developer's guidelines and possibly bylaw. I can't go any closer to the property line. That's the closest point. But you notice it's not oriented the way that we want it oriented. We're going to have to rotate this to fit it within the boundaries of that lot pocket. So that's what we're going to do next. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the rotate command, but I'm going to use a special type of rotate command. So here's the rotate, there's the base point. Now you notice down here that we have specify rotation angle, or we can use a reference point. That's what we're going to use as the reference. Now you could probably specify the rotation angle if you wanted to calculate it. That's a little complicated to do because you'd have to know exactly what sort of the opposite angle is to the angle we had here gets a little complicated, so I'm going to use the reference. So the reference angle here, I'm going to specify the reference angle. So we're going to use the reference angle is going to be the length before we rotate it or the angle before we rotate it. So essentially it's going to be this angle here. And now I, you'll see that I can actually rotate it fairly smartly to orient along with this property line. So I'll just click on that corner there. And you'll notice that everything is now lined up perfectly with that property line, with that lot, po that lot pocket line that we had before. Okay, so using that reference on the rotate makes all the difference, makes it a lot easier. Now I want to leave this block over here because whenever I edit this block, I'll actually be editing this block. Okay, it makes it a little bit easier. If I didn't have a copy of it and I tried to edit the block in here, if I ever needed to insert text, for example, I'd have to rotate that text to insert it in, in this location, whereas I can go over here and I can insert it straight up and down and it will automatically insert angled over here. So it just makes it a little bit easier to do that. Alright, so now we're going to do our utility rights of way. So we're going to add in the utility rights of way now. So we've already got one here. This is the 3 meter utility right of way, but it's the wrong layer. This is on the property layer. We need to change that to the property easement layer. So the next one down, and you'll notice that the color changes. That's what we want. And we have another utility right away in this corner here that is 2.5 meters by 3 meters. Well, this represents the 3 meter line. If you remember back to when we were created that line, I offset this line 3 meters to create this one. So this is already 3.5 meters. Now all we need to do is offset 2.5 meters, this property line. I'll delete this one because that one's not necessary anymore. And I'll just trim out the excess. So I'm going to use that as my trim line and trim that one there. And I'm going to change the layer of this line the property easement. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to add in the sidewalk. So the sidewalk is one and a half meters offset of the property line. And I'm also going to add in the uh, lip of the gutter. So that represents the street, which is three meters from the sidewalk. So I'm going to change my offset dimension to three. And I'm going to offset my line three meters. And these ones I'm going to change now as well to uh, C road layer because these represent 
Oh, we, we use road, but uh, there it is. But this is the uh, sidewalk, and this would be the uh, the street. But they're all on that that road layer. So this represent this one here uh, is the uh, back of walk. So I'm going to put a, a note in there to that effect. Now I don't know if I can do this or not. Let me just try this. Let me try this. See if I can do an arc dimension here. Yeah. So if we do that, we don't want that dimension. We don't care what that dimension is. So I'm going to go to do a text override. And instead of doing the little bracket symbols like that, I'm going to leave those out. Now this will truly overlie, override the text that we see there. I'm just going to do 1.5 meters back of walk. Now the, the only benefit to that is that I actually get, well, I get the symbol in there, but uh, I suppose we could probably explode that and get rid of that symbol. Let me see if that works too. Yeah, there you go. Right, but it, it orients the text for me nicely so I don't have to try and figure out the angle. I'll do the same thing over here. I just exploded that text to get rid of that arc symbol because we don't need that arc symbol in there. And this one here is three meters lip of gutter. Okay, and again I'm going to explode it so that I can get rid of that arc symbol. All right, so we have um, we have our block. You notice that the block is intersecting with our sidewalk lines as well as the lip of gutter lines. Um, the problem with that is, is that we, uh, we want to have a little bit of an apron. We want to flare this driveway out just a little bit so when somebody's pulling in from the street, they can actually pull in and they, don't, they won't have to cut the corner too sharp because that corner will end up getting damaged if that's the case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this block in place. So edit block in place. And it comes up with the option which block do you want to edit. I'm going to edit the house block. And you'll notice that it kind of highlights for me. Now I'm going to make a change to this one here. I'm going to use my trim command. I'm just going to trim this back to the sidewalk because it comes straight to the sidewalk point but then it kind of flares out from there. And I'm just going to draw a line. Now this is just arbitrary. Doesn't, you know, I'm just going to draw a line sort of arbitrarily flaring out. They'll decide on site what, how much to flare that. I'm just going to draw something as close as I can and I'll trim off the excess. All right, so where we left off was uh, just with the uh, doing the flare on the um, the driveway. So once we finished with that, then we can actually go to um, save the changes to the block. Okay, so make sure you're in block editor. Make sure you save the changes to the block, and you don't do anything in block editor that you don't want to do. Uh, that sometimes happens. I usually make my background in the block editor a little bit different color, so I notice something's a bit off. So you can change the color of your uh, um, your block editor if you go to tools and options. Right, come on, options. There we are. Go to tools, options. Wait a second to pop up. If you go under color scheme and click on colors, and uh, you can go to block editor here, and you can change the color of your block editor. So I don't choose black. I choose something a little grayer than black, and that just reminds me that I'm in block editor. Because sometimes you know you get working on a block and you forget that you're in block editor and you start drawing all this thing, all these things, not realizing that you're actually adding it to the block. Um, so just just a little tip for you there. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to do is now that we have our house lined up the way we want it, is we're going to add dimensions between the house and the property line. Okay, so we're going to choose a different dimension style here. We're using the standard now, standard dimension, and we're going to be using aligned as a dimension style. So you now click on the corner of the house, and you're going to go perpendicular. So make sure you have that perpendicular O snap on. And you're going to select the uh, the distance there. Okay, now having two uh, an extra two decimal places of ac accuracy here is too much, so I'm going to modify that dimension style so it doesn't have that. So I'm going to go to my standard, I'm going to go to modify, and I'm going to go to my uh, units. And instead of precision of four decimal places, I only need two. Okay, so I'm going to make that modification. You might have to do the same with yours. And you'll notice now that we've got 1.22. Now sometimes you have to manually place Depending on where it's uh, ending up, you might have to manually place the text so that it doesn't interfere with any of the symbols you already have drawn. Remember, you want to try and keep this as neat as possible. Okay? You want to try and keep it neat and clean. You want somebody to be able to uh, look at this and very easily find the information that they need. Okay? Not have to uh, guess or scale off. So I'm just going to go around the property finding all the, um, all the locations basically from the four corners to the property line using the perpendicular. Now, if you have to you know, move out a little bit, that's fine too, just as long as you, know, you can see that that is the dimension 
it doesn't have to be exactly in the location where um, you know it's perpendicular, but just get it as close as you can. Any point where you have a geodetic marker, or sorry, not a geodetic, a uh, any point where you have one of these um, datum symbols, you want to have a dimension to the property line at that point. The reason being is so you can calculate your slopes, right? You need to be able to calculate your slopes, and those slopes are based off of a distance to the property line, and so you want to make sure that you have that. And I think that we have pretty much all of them now. If uh, You might want to just do a double check to make sure that you haven't missed any. But uh, I think that should be everything. Now we're going to add elevations in here. Now we also need to, uh, to add in uh, datums to the corners, but we'll do that in a second. We'll add the elevations around the property line first. So we're going to use standard text style for that. We don't need multi-line, we just need single line. So I'm just going to do one here. And so let's just do uh, the front corners there, 31.62. Okay, so that's my... And now what I like to do with this one is I actually like to rotate it 45 degrees so that it stands out a little bit better. So I'm actually going to go to rotation. I'm going to go 45. And see, yeah, there we go. So that's ultimately what we want there. And now I'm gonna, uh, going to uh, make multiple copies of this one. So I'm just going to choose the copy command. And I'm just going to go around here, and the reason I do 45 degrees is because it fits nicely on the property. It doesn't interfere with any of the other dimensions that we have there. Most items should be 45 or less than 45. I might take O snap off here. Um, just makes it a little bit easier to see. Might have to modify a few of them manually in terms of their uh, their angle, but it should work. Now I'm just going to go around and place all of the. Uh, all of the angles in, and I know I'm going to need some for the corners, so I might as well do that now while I'm while I have this command running. And I'm also going to need some along the sides here as well. Two along the sides, one, two, and we'll manually locate these later. It's just I figured I might as well do it now. And then just go through and, and edit these. Now, if you need to change the angle, that's fine. You can do a rotate command, and you can change. You know, if you need to get to fit it into the location where it needs to be, it doesn't have to be 45. I just do that because it fits nicest. So take a look and see if make sure that they're all not, you know, none of them, none of them are interfering with existing dimensions. That's why we do this at this stage. And uh, with this one here, I might rotate this one around as well. So let's just do a rotate here and let's get it to look like that. And now we need to actually make changes to the grades. Now the grades are given on the outside. They're already um, given to us in the, in the building grade plan. If we want to know what they are, we can go over to this plan here and you can see for lot 63 what the grades are at each point along the, the uh, property. So 31.2, 31.27 for the front corners. Down the sides, right near the uh, front of the garage is 31.48 on both sides. On the left side, it changes slightly. At the back of the house, 29.17. It's a little bit different on the right side, 29.1 and then 28.92 and 28.87. Now those, you can't change those. You have to um, modify them and change those to exactly what they are So okay, what you want to, this is what you want to try and do here. Now these ones, what do we what do we need to do here in order to um, to get this to be a minimum three percent slope, maximum thirty percent, right? So we need to try and find a balance in there. I would recommend about that ten percent slope amount. So if you know the the grade at the uh, property line and you know the grade or you know the distance, you can calculate using your slope command or your slope rise rise over run the, the formula. You can calculate what that grade should be. Okay, now in this case, we've got some in here um, already, 31.77. But I recommend that you actually go through and do this. If your numbers are a little bit different, that's fine. This isn't going to be a full 10%, um, but uh, you might want to start off with 10% all the way around when you're doing your grades. And then if you find that one is going to be um, it's higher than 30% or less than 2% somewhere because you've uh, made them all 10%, then that's when you start modifying. But aim for that 10% amount to start with. Does that make sense? 10% is ideal. We want more slope rather than less, but not too much. So there's a balance in there. And 10% is sort of a point where 
It's a good starting point. Alright, I'm going to change the angle of this one a little bit because it's interfering with the property line a bit. So let's just angle that up a little more and move it over. Keep in mind that this property line when it's printed is going to be thicker than it actually shows on the screen because it's a thicker line. Haven't saved my changes in a while. Better make sure I do that. And now that we have all the slopes in there, and, and we'll just uh, got to add in the uh, the datums. Okay, so I'm going to insert datums into the uh, along the property line. Remember my uh, it's geodetic symbol. It's named wrong. And I'm just going to insert one in and make a copy of it. It's a little bit easier to do from copying. Okay, so we have the four corners of the property. Those are the easy ones. Now, in terms of the location of the of the uh, datums along the side, the general rule is: if you go to this plan here, it's a little easier to see. It's six meters from the front is where you're going to find the datums for the uh, the front of the garage and about seven and a half meters from the back. Now fortunately for us, we created our lot pocket in exactly those locations, didn't we? We created a six meter uh, offset for our lot pocket, so if we place that datum right in that location, again it doesn't have to be exact, but it should be right around here somewhere. Okay, so I'm just locating it approximately where the seven and a half meter line would intersect. Clean it up a little bit. And now I'm going to place these at those locations. Starting to come together quite nicely, I'd say. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to be adding in our slope vectors. So we're going to be using the uh, proper layer here, which is going to be uh, C slope. And we're going to be annotating. Now, this one is, is using a, a multi leader, but there's actually a slope vector leader style. Okay? So that's what we're going to be using there. And so what we're going to do is we're going to essentially uh, draw slopes now. And you're going to have to calculate these slopes based on the dimensions, which we need to go the opposite way, sorry. So there'll be a slope from here to here. And that's going to ask me for some text. Now I'm just going to put in some values here. I'm, I'm not going to do all of them because there's just far too many of them. It would take forever for us to do, but you get the idea anyways. You want to inc include slopes to each, from one um, datum to another all the way around, the closest datums. Okay? You don't have to do, you know, for example, you don't have to do this datum here to the one in the back corner. Okay? You don't need to do that. You just need to do, show that the slope is moving away from the house on all sides. That's all you need to do. So I'll just do a couple more here just to give you an example. Some are going to be a little tighter than others. If that's the case, just modify them accordingly. Oops, that one's a little bit weird. Even if you don't have the arrow, sometimes you don't, you don't need the arrow for these really short ones. You can just have the text in, so you can explode it and delete the arrow if you need to. Try one at the back here, it'll be a little bit easier. And it doesn't have to be from one, like precisely from one datum to the other. You can have it approximately, just as long as, as you can see that the slope in this direction, from that datum to this datum, is going to be that. So it doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to match up. So some people will try and like get it as close to that datum as possible. Don't worry about that, okay? It doesn't need to be precise. Like I said, I could spend a fair bit of time. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. You guys get the idea. Um, this one here, I might even just move this up like that. 
even though it's not pointing directly at the datum, we want to show that it's sloping away from the, the house at that point. Okay. Okay, now we're going to add some notes to items that are specific, so things like the uh, utility right away. So we're going to use a different style here. We're going to use the standard multiliter style. And we're going to use a different uh, different layer as well. So we're going to use our C annotation layer. C annotext. We're going to highlight certain things on this plan. So for this one here, this is the utility right of way. And the dimensions are 2.5 meters by, let's use a small x there, 3.0. Okay, so that tells us we have a utility right of way there. Text size looks a little small, but we'll come back to that. We're going to have to label all of the uh, window wells along with their size. Actually, it's 1.52. Change that to 1.52. Cantilever, just cant for short instead of typing out cantilever. You could spell it all out as well. Maybe I'll spell it all out so we know what it looks like when it's spelt. All right, you get the idea. There's another window well there. The other thing you want to label is your eaves. So we're going to label the eave line. Now the eaves are the part that overhangs. Um, from the sides of the building and uh, helps to keep your uh, water from running down the face of your building. So if you're uh, eaves troughing or the gutters that are on the side of your uh, roof, if they overflow, then we want to make sure we have a little bit of, you know, it's not dripping right down next to the house because that just gets really messy and can tend to uh, make the house look uh, really dirty. The utility right away. I think that's all of it. And lastly is the uh, setback line. So that's another thing you want to label as well as just labeling that setback line. I'll move that arrow in a second here. Now that's just really for our purposes, okay? But um, you don't typically find that on a plot plan. But I'm doing this step because I want you guys to know what that line is all about because it is important for our purposes. It's not something the city doesn't need. And lastly, we just have some additional notes to add in. So I'm going to go to annotate, use the standard text style. And I'm going to add in the lot next door so that the city knows what's happening next to this one. So this is lot 64. This is lot 63. That's a lot we're working on. And this, of course, is lot 62. And the last thing we'll add in is we'll add in the street address at the front here as well. Copper foot close. So then everyone knows approximately where this is located. And one last thing is oops, You may notice that some of the text sizes look a little bit different than the plan. You can uh, modify those, you can edit those, but do it through the dimension style editor. So for example, this one here, uh, this was using the standard leader style. If I want to change the text style of that, then I'm going to do it through here. All right, so text style here is standard. I might choose something else. I might choose maybe dims. It's a little bit, uh, it's even smaller. Let's try something different. Try notes from five. See if that makes a difference. That's a bit too big now. Okay, and then the final step, and then we're all finished, before we print it anyways, is to edit this information up here. So you want to look through here. Most of the stuff is already filled out for you properly, so don't worry about any of the location here. I've already given that to you. You want to make sure that you edit your name. Okay, so uh, double click on the block. You're going to come up with an attribute editor. These are created using attributes. And you just want to go through and you want to check every one of these lines here. 
Okay, so actual top of footing. You want these are all um, the wrong values. You want to edit those to what we actually have. So actual top of footing in this case is 29.93. Click on the next one. Lowest top of footing is 29.20. Okay, these are all going to be values that are included in this title block, and this is a, a single location where you can go to edit that. You guys are familiar with attributes? Not yet. Okay, so you'll learn about attributes. This is already created for you. It's a really handy way of entering data into AutoCAD that's repeated from time to time. Um, so it's called an attribute editor, and uh, it just makes it really, really easy. So you want to go through here and you want to edit all of these according to this specific plan, and of course, put your name in there. Your full name, please, and under file number, put your ID number. Okay? And then the current drawing date. So it's today, today, 14th of January. And don't worry about the drawing scale, it should be all the same. And you'll notice that when you do that, it now updates. Right? The items that I've changed have now been updated. And you don't have to worry about placing text, locating text, it just makes it a lot easier to do.